I became involved uh, with the festival in, uh, in the earliest days, before there was a festival. I was working with the Wood County Park District as their graduate assistant. And we had been doing for many years at that point at Wood County Parks, a Wood County um, fine art show at the Wood County Courthouse. And the park district was sort of behind getting all of the artists together. And uh, during my internship, I was saying to myself, you know, I think we can do this, but I think we can do this bigger and better. And uh, at that point, I said, you know, maybe we need to really rethink this because there were very few artists. There were very few. There was no judging uh, or jurying or anything like that. It was just whoever could show could show. And so you had everything from people painting merry-go-round horses to uh, people doing t-shirts to whatever. It, it, there was really no rhyme or reason to the type of artwork that was being displayed. And then there was a raffle. And I can tell you that there were roughly about 235 people came because I was in charge of the raffle. And they said, we have 235 tickets. And you'd pick the ticket out. And, 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 and it was sort of a door prize kind of a thing. So, uh, and, there, and of course, the Depew family was there. And there were some you know, known groups. But for the most part, it was very low key. And I thought, well, we could do this better. At the same time that that was happening, and I was having this revelation that we could do something bigger, uh, there was a group of people in town, in, in, in downtown Bowling Green, who I was loosely associated with, who were saying, hey, you know, it would be a good idea is if we did this arts festival for downtown in Bowling Green. So it sort of all started to work together. So I became involved at the, uh, with the permission of the director of the park district at the time to get involved, bring our resources into what they were doing um, and, and see if there were any um, uh, of my resources as a recreation professional and a special events person, how could I help in, in the name of the uh, park district? And so it was sort of a, 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 a sort of everybody sort of kind of came together. And then the ideas that everybody started having about how, we, how can we do this, what can we do, what, uh, what is our vision for this festival, what do we want it to be, what do we not want it to be, all of that sort of started to come together. So I was at those very first meetings where we discussed what was this thing going to be? I was at the meeting when we decided to call it the Black Swamp Arts Festival. So uh, very early on. So what was the vision originally? I think the vision was more we didn't want ourselves to be, I, at, the, at the time there were a couple of arts festivals and they still exist today, the Ann Arbor Arts Festival and uh, the Crosby Festival of the Arts in Toledo. We, we were saying we don't want to be that big. We don't want to be that, that grand. Um, and w we probably wouldn't become that big because we were in a much smaller community. But our community had similar aspects to it as, as Toledo and as Ann Arbor, which was a, a strong uh, arts community, uh, a university, uh, so a, a group of people that would appreciate the arts uh, that lived here. But we really, w one of the visions was is that we wanted it to be a fine arts show. We didn't want it to be an arts and crafts festival. Um, which we wanted it to really be something special. And so that meant um, juried artists, that meant very specific kinds of artists and, uh, and very specific uh, parameters for the art that was going to be either on display or involved. So, so yeah, so the vision was much more, uh, let's, let's, um, let's make this something special, something unique for Bowling Green. Well, performing arts, I, I, we were uh, very excited and lucky to have Leon Redbone be our main, uh, main, uh, main stage uh, opener. I mean, yeah, it, wow, have, having someone so well known to come to to a festival that was its very first year, and of course it rained out. Uh, he ended up not playing on the main stage, but playing at St. Mark's Lutheran Church, and and some diehard uh, Leon Redbone fans followed him there to to go and listen. Um, that was uh, it was very exciting, but we were so weather dependent. We still are. The festival's always weather dependent. Uh, any any special event you do outside is weather dependent. So, is it true that once when you were chairman of the festival, you sold your soul to the devil? To it is. Uh, I actually did sell my soul to the devil. Uh, I, at least that's what I would tell people. Uh, I just said, you know, please, please don't let it rain because I was chair of the festival. Uh, let's see, one, two, three. So the fourth, fifth, and sixth years. And then I was later on like the 11th year or so, somewhere in that neighborhood as chair of the festival. So I, you know, I, the thing we really, really needed was dry. And that first year, it almost 
ended the festival because it was a deluge. It came down so hard on Saturday. We just didn't think we were going to be able to have another festival. But thanks to some very, very uh, special people in our community, they made sure that financially we would overcome the losses, which we did, and they have been paid back many times over. Uh, in, in, uh, and so we were able to, to make it through those tough times. It, it, it was tough. It really was. And, you know, you're a budding festival. You're just learning what you're, you know, the people were just getting to know each other. It was a family of people that were coming together and just getting to know each other and how each other worked and, Everybody had uh, their own opinions and their, you know, uh, everybody had an idea of what they wanted the festival to be, so. So you've had, what, what have your different roles, you were, you were chair for four years? I have been chair and vice chair, of course, prior to that, and then I've been the uh, chair of youth arts on several occasions, uh, chair of hospitality for artists. Um, I've been involved in every aspect of the festival from set up to tear down every single thing that you can basically do at the festival. I've been involved in it in some way or another. Why, why for you is it important to be so involved? You know, I can see being involved for a while and then maybe stepping back. As, as, you know, some people do. There's some people who have been very involved and then have... I think there's certain ways we can give back to our community. And, and I think this is one where I can take the talents that I have, the, the skill set that I have, and apply it in a very real way to make my community a better place for people to be. So, uh, you know, using my background in recreation, administration, um, organizational skills, all of that is something that I really enjoy doing. And to see the results of it, to, to you know, uh, you bring different leadership skills. Every chair has different skills that they bring to the table. And some of us run meetings in a loose way. Some of them are a little bit more rigid. Um, any way you look at it, all of us bring something to the table that can be helpful. I, I just really enjoy being involved. I, the, the last art, artists at work, so working directly with artists that are, you know, demonstrating their art. What a fantastic opportunity for people to see how art is created. So all of these different kinds of things. I, I really like kind of stepping into a role where I feel like my skills are going to be useful. Um, and one thing I've never done, and I probably won't do, is volunteers. <laughs> I just don't, don't have any interest in that. And now that it's all online, it's made it so much easier. We back, back in the beginning, it was all calling on phones and, and, and trying to uh, strong army friends into volunteering for the festival. It requires a lot. How many volunteers does it require? I've heard everywhere from 600 to 1,000, so depending on, and no one knows the exact number, but it's a tremendous number of people that, that do this. And we have the core group of volunteers who put their heart and soul into it and go to meetings on a monthly basis. Starting in January, I mean, we're, we're thinking about the festival that early on till, um, you know, the, the days of the festival. And some of those people, again, the committee members are there. They are literally there for the entire weekend. I mean, you, you know, you see them at 2 o'clock in the morning and you see them the next day at 8 in the morning and they're, going strong and then so many members of our community I mean that's what makes this this festival so special is that people really have a stake in this from young kids all the way to adults who have uh, you know they want to give back to their community and their skill set allows them the opportunity to help volunteer in some aspect so it really becomes a true community driven festival As far as the festival growing, I mean, it's, it's grown to a point right now where I think it's where it is. I, I, don't, I don't know that we'll ever get much more gigantic than we are right now. I think at this point, it's a matter of looking at the different activities that we do, tweaking them, deciding whether is this something that's useful to the festival and is working, or do we add something new, like the sidewalk, uh, the sidewalk chalk was a new thing, and it just took off, and it was great. You know, there have been other, other parts of the festival that may... Um, have gone by the wayside, and, and that's okay. Uh, there's, everybody brings something new. When we sat down and wrote the bylaws, one of the main things that we did was we put term limits on our chairs, and that as the chair of the festival has a term limit. That's the only one, two years. You can be two years consecutive. After that, you, you have to step down. I mean, it's, it's written into the bylaws. And the reason behind that was we want new ideas and new leadership every single year. There are festivals... Truly, even here in Northwest Ohio, even here in Wood County, where the, the chair has not changed in 20 years. Well, that doesn't really lend itself to 
uh, it lends itself to consistency, but it doesn't lend itself to necessarily new ideas. So if I'd gone to a festival and the chair has been there and maybe the same group of people have been running it, and it's the same festival, I say, I, I went to that already, I don't need to go. I think that the arts festival here in Bowling Green is so much different because you kind of never know what you're going to see. You're going to see the standards. There's going to be visual art. There's going to be performing art. There's going to be the invitational art. There's going to be um, the, the, the youth art area. All of that is standard. Those are our foundations, you know. Our, our, uh, you know, it's like a mall. <laughs> you know, there are anchor stores. <laughs> there are things you're going to expect to see, and they're going to be good. And then there's all the other stuff in between, and, and some of that can be tweaked and changed, and, and all of it has. Everything from visual arts to performing arts is tweaked over, over time. It seems it's interesting, and I don't know that it's unique, but it's certainly a distinctive element is that the festival is strong in so many areas. So you might have a music festival that has a little art show attached to it, mm -hmm. That you can pay to, but this is like all the aspects, including, you know, including the food, including the concession. Yes, is very strong. And was that sort of intentional at the beginning, or how did that? Absolutely happen? intentional at the beginning. In fact, we would go uh, to other festivals. The different groups of us would go to different festivals to see what they were doing and kind of see what can we, you know take from them, good and bad, like it, what do we like, what we don't like. I remember specifically going to a festival um, before we be even started this one, and I was looking for the youth arts because I was going to be the youth arts chair. We thought, well, we have to have something for kids. And I went, and it was a tent, just one tent that was maybe a 10 by 10 tent, and the kids could put a piece of paper in the bottom of a lid of a box and they would take marbles that were in temper paint and they would drop the marbles in and roll them around inside the box. And then they would pull out the paper and it was sort of this kind of Jackson Pollocky looking uh, splashy art kind of a thing. Great, that was the only thing that was available for kids to do at that festival. And as I've gotten older and, uh, and I've had kids in my life now, for many, many years, I realized there's, they really want to be a part of this festival. So in order to be um, available to the entire community, we felt very strongly at that point that the, the youth arts area had to be second to none. And it is. I've never been to another festival that caters to children and families like we do with a, with a youth art stage and with the many different activities and, and the, the, the stuff that they can do to take home and all this, uh, also the stuff that they can do just to leave there and other kids can build upon it. So we, we took good and bad from all different festivals and looked at, well, what can we do with our, what, what do we want to do with our art? Well, we want it to be fine art. We want it to be juried. We also want to encourage local artists to be involved, and that's where the Invitational Show comes from. All of this, and uh, even down to artist hospitality. We want our artists to feel special, and I know that in some festivals, perhaps they don't feel as special. They don't, they don't get a restroom to themselves. We give, that, give them the opportunity to go to, it's a very simple thing, but restrooms in an air-conditioned facility where they can put their feet up for a few minutes and, and, uh, and get a bottle of water and take a breath and, and uh, you know, have something to eat. All of that stuff plays into making our festival different and special compared to others. This is the biggest block party in Bowling Green, and it is definitely a homecoming, without a doubt. I will, you know, even living here in Bowling Green every day, 24-7, I don't run into my friends or the people that I know very often. You know, you, you go to the festival, you see everybody, and, and, and you'll see people you haven't seen in years and years. I ran into a friend of mine backstage um, once from graduate school. She was back there with a friend of a friend kind of a thing. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, out of the blue, here's this person I haven't seen in, in 15 years. You know, fantastic. You know, and, and now with, with social media, people can, can contact their friends. Hey, let's meet in Bowling Green. Let's get back together. I, I do know that even at the high school and uh, uh, at other, other parts, of maybe the university, people are having events where they say, hey, let's get together class of blank. Let's meet together at the festival. And you'll see that when you get, get people together, particularly in the, in the beer garden area, uh, which is a story in, its, in itself. Um, but uh, going, uh, going from a very, very small area of the beer garden, which you probably remember, it was tiny. Uh, it was absolutely tiny. And, um, and it was because it had to be at that point on private property. And so we, and we were able, after many years of, of uh, successful 
behavior patterns within that small area, we're able to convince city council to allow the consumption of alcohol on city property. And uh, with, with many parameters, but still, um, it has opened things up quite a bit. And, and so that allows for these large groups of people, not to say that alcohol is the most important thing, but, uh, but people do tend to congregate in that particular area. And it, that speaks also that the relationship with the city has, has really seemed to get, get better as the festival has gone on. Absolutely. I know when starting out, I think, in, in fact, there was a, a former police chief um, who said to me, very, very early on, and it was very kind of funny. He said, well, I remember back when there was some kind of a, he said, I, we were involved in something out at the stadium back in the 19, like 71, 1972, something like that. And he said, and it was just, I, I can't even remember, it was like the Black Swamp Folk Fest? Poe Ditch Fest, yeah. And, oh, and he said to you, there was all kinds of stuff going on. And I said, I said, yeah, do you know how old I was then? Because <laughs> it, 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 to me, seemed a little bit like, you know, you're kind of looking back at what could have possibly happened. And there had been no track record of that at the, at the arts festival at all. And so there, there were some, not to say that he was anti-festival, he was kind of skeptical. And, and being a, a hardened police officer, he was like, you know, I've seen a few things. We want to make sure that this festival is an event that people come to, feel safe. And, and it has proven to be that. It's, it's, not, uh, it's not an out-of-control beer bash. And I think that's kind of, over the years, we've been able to not only prove to the city, but work well with the city. To, to make sure that they are working with us and we meet with them on a regular basis. All of the mayors we've worked with, all of the city administrators that we've worked with have all been on board with this. And right down to the public works guys uh, and that come out and take care of uh, making sure that trash gets picked up or making sure that the downtown is looking good before the festival. I think that over time, everybody within the city really kind of sees how this benefits our community as a whole. It, it, you know, when we bring 50 to 60,000 people in for a big block party uh, centered around performing and visual arts and all the ancillary uh, activities that go along with it, um, it takes a tremendous amount of effort. But what it absolutely takes is an agreement upon everybody within the, the, the Arts Festival Committee, all the way through City Council, the Mayor's Office, and all of the other departments within the city that have something going on with it. So 25 years, you think you would have been surprised? I am shocked. I had thought about this not long ago. I thought, my gosh, 25 years I've been doing this? Um, I was just a kid back then, you know. I didn't know anything. I still don't. But uh, it, it was amazing. It, it has been amazing to see how many faces um, uh, that, that are still involved with the festival even today in some capacity. You know, there are very few of us, I think, that have been there for the full 25 years, but it's been darn close for a lot of people, you know. Um, I think there's a, a fairly small group of us that are still around, um, and, and it's not because of lack of interest, it's because many of these folks have moved on and moved to different communities. But I still see them, they come back uh, at the festival, and, uh, and it's nice to see the old chairs coming back, and it's nice to see uh, old committee members coming back, and I should say former committee members <laughs> coming back. Um, it, it's just, uh, it has been such, amaz such an amazing journey. And uh, to be here for 25 years is really, I never ever thought it would, I never thought I'd live in Bowling Green for 25 years, to be honest. I gave my boss back then two years, and I said, eh, you know, I'll be looking around. And, and do you think uh, the festival is something that keeps people like you staying in town? It's certainly part of it. I mean, our community offers so much to so many. And, and if you have an interest in, in the arts, Bowling Green is a really good place to be. We have a strong arts community throughout the, throughout the city, from, from the university to uh, the community, community band to, uh, to different youth, uh, youth theater groups, the, the, the Black Swamp Players. There's always something artistic going on in our town. And I think that, that certainly lends itself to making this a very, very uh, quality place to live. I think the festival is going to continue on. It's 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 a matter of change over time. You know, there are like myself. You know, I I I've been in for 25 years. Is it time for me to kind of 
fade into the shadows a little bit and let other people come in. And, and I haven't been on the committee in the sense of uh, going to all the committee meetings and that sort of stuff. I am this year, but um, for a few years there, I've kind of taken a few steps back and, and kind of been you know, helping out in, in the background. My wife is also a help out in the background kind of a person. We like doing that kind of stuff. Uh, people have whispered into my ear on occasion, do you want to be chair again? And there's other people out there that can be chair. I'm, I've been chair for four of the festivals. There are, there are plenty of other great leaders in our community that can, can step right in there and bring their own style, their own flavor. And so the festival, of the, 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 the future of the festival is dependent on the commitment from this community to take the leadership as those of us who have been involved for so long take a step back and don't worry about whether or not that beer keg is tapped or don't worry about whether or not, you know, there's a... Uh, some something being sold uh, uh, on the street that shouldn't be sold on the street. Or those kinds of things are, are, I think, in my past anyway. Um, they are certainly always at the forefront in our mind. And uh, the festival is, has, has gone through a tremendous amount of, of development and change over time. And I certainly don't see that ha uh, having, I don't see that changing in the future. I think that we need to continue to change. We need to follow the bylaws, which we do. And one of the few organizations I know that do uh, follow their own rules. But we really, really need to follow our own rules and keep the new blood coming in and the new ideas. And, then, and don't, don't squelch any ideas, even if somebody says, you know, well, you know, back 1997, we did that. You know, it didn't work. <laughs> so what? <laughs> it didn't work, you know, you know, 20 years ago. Let's try it now and see what happens, you know. Festival has never sold naming rights. That's correct. And yeah. And it, it really is, I won't say largely, but it's a, a good part of it is funded by there are just people in the community. Yes, there are f there are a, a, a few different organizations that have given money over time, and have given decent amounts of money. Everything from the uh, uh, Ohio Art, uh, the is the Ohio. Council on the Arts, or our Ohio Arts Council, right. sorry. Um, they've, they've given us grants over in the past. Um, we've received uh, grants from different community organizations and different companies within the town. Um, it's been presented by and sponsored by different organizations, but I believe that it, it really is coming directly from the people that, that live here. They're going to give what they can, and so our friends of the festival, um, giving opportunities and and now with with it used to be again so difficult sending mailers out mailers out mailers out now it's paypal i can do it from my phone while i'm having uh, you know having something to eat and somebody said hey did you did you give to the festival yet no we'll go to paypal and do it right now <laughs> you know and and so i think that's really going to change the way we we support our festival but making it easier for people um, rather than writing a check just do it online